ओ नम शिवाय ओ नम शिवाय ओ नम शिवाय ओ नमस्ते well eclipse or no eclipse we're going to go ahead with this program you might ask i mean i certainly did ask how can the vrittikaras how can they misunderstand brahman how can they think that brahman can be the object of something like meditation because they misconstrue the upanishads they get some completely different meaning by taking the statements of the upanishads out of context so then we're we're going to see a perfect example of this in the next passage where the vrittikara's opponent persists even after the objections by the vedantins because it's like they don't get it right so their way is the only way that they could see it that brahman is something dual it's something that can be made into an object but no it can't and if we go into the context of the quotes that they pull we'll see that this is a fact opponent that is vritikar it cannot be so for brahman is presented here as a factor in an injunction about some action for there are such injunctions about meditation as the self my dear is to be seen brihararanyaka 245 that self that is free from sin is to be sought for is to be inquired into chandogya 871 the self alone is to be profoundly meditated on brihararanyaka 147 one should meditate only on the world of the self brihararanyaka 1415 one who wants to become brahman shall meditate on brahman mundakopanishad 329 but as the footnote says this is the opponent's interpretation the vedantic interpretation is one who knows brahman becomes brahman As a result of such texts the question arises what is that self what is that brahman and all such upanishadic terms as eternal omniscient bhagavad gita 224 ever satisfied gita 420 even pure intelligent and free by nature nrishringa tapani upanishad 9 Brahman is consciousness and bliss brihararanyaka 3928 and so on serve a purpose by presenting the characteristics of the self and brahman from its worship will accrue the result that is liberation which is revealed in the scriptures but is not known from any other source but if the upanishadic But if the Upanishadic sentences do not form parts of injunctions about actions and they refer merely to an entity there will be no possibility of acceptance or rejection so that they will become certainly useless like such sentences as the earth consists of seven islands there goes that king and so on so they misconstrue the meaning and they misinterpret the objects the actual objects of meditation which are superimposed on brahman as metaphors as qualities of brahman oi because brahman does not have qualities either no actions no consciousness no memory no identity nothing So how do they get it so wrong? Let's trace these quotes that they bring up back to their context. 
and read the whole verse from which those little tidbits were extracted. <laughs> and let's see the real purport. So let's take the first quote. The self, my dear, is to be seen. Brihararanyaka 245. So if we go and look up Brihararanyaka, he said, It is not for the sake of the husband, my dear, that he is loved, but for one's own sake that he is loved. It is not for the sake of the wife, my dear, that she is loved, but for one's own sake that she is loved. It is not for the sake of the sons, my dear, that they are loved, but for one's own sake that they are loved. It is not for the sake of wealth, my dear, that it is loved, but for one's own sake that it is loved. It is not for the sake of the Brahmana, my dear, that he is loved, but for one's own sake that he is loved. It is not for the sake of the Kshatriya, my dear, that he is loved, but for one's own sake that he is loved. It is not for the sake of the worlds, my dear, that they are loved, but for one's own sake that they are loved. It is not for the sake of the gods, my dear, that they are loved, but for one's own sake that they are loved. It is not for the sake of the beings, my dear, that they are loved, but for one's own sake that they are loved. It is not for the sake of all, my dear, that all is loved, but for one's own sake that it is loved. The self, my dear Maitreyi, should be realized, should be heard of, reflected on, and meditated upon. By the realization of the self, my dear, through hearing, reflection, and meditation, all this is known. Well, that's a kind of a different story, isn't it? If you go back to the context of this quote, it is not simply that one should realize Brahman alone, but one should realize Brahman through one's love for all these other things. Why do we love the husband? Why do we love the wife, the children? the family, the world even, God. Huh? Why do we love all these things? Why do we love the universe? It is because of the self, not for the sake of the, those objects themselves, because those are all temporary. Those are all changeable. Those all have limiting qualities, boundaries, and so forth. In other words, they're dualistic. But we love them because they are expressions of the self. Because we see the self through them, somehow or other. It can't be explained. It could never be explained. It's not some function of the brain, but a function of pure consciousness, that it is aware of itself. This is Turiya. And Turiya doesn't need any support from anything else. It has no framework. It has no ground, no support. Rather, Turiya or Brahman is the ground, is the support, the foundation, the substrate of everything else because it's the substrate of consciousness. The self-awareness of Brahman, when viewed through another object, such as the idea of the self, the universe, the gods, etc., 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 anything that we perceive is cognized on the ground of the self, so this is the indirect meditation that the Upanishads teach. They actually teach. <laughs> because one cannot meditate on the self. Meditation means concentration of the mind on a particular object maintained for a significant span of time. Enough time 
to actually transform the consciousness from consciousness of the object to consciousness of itself, the subject, Brahman. That is real meditation. It takes time. Most people don't give it the time that's required to get the actual effect. And especially the first time, it takes many hours. It takes really an intensive of just sitting to realize the self. And the object of meditation can be, I mean, anything, because the self is the substrate of everything. But I think personally that consciousness is the best object for meditation because consciousness is connected directly with the self. And there's no mistaking it for any material object. Uh, because even though it's a function of duality, it is nothing but the self. And it's pretty easy to see that. So this is why we do research into consciousness. This is why it's consciousness research <laughs> and not meditation research center. Huh? Yes, meditation is a part of it, certainly. But the object of meditation is always something manifested. It's always something in duality. Because duality is necessary to have an object in the first place. <laughs> so as soon as you're in meditation, you're in duality. But then something else can happen. After the mind has been held in concentrated state for a sufficient amount of time, the self within reveals itself. This is not an action. Because the self is pre-existent, it is not the result of some change or transformation. This is where the New Age people get it wrong. There's no transformation of consciousness. Consciousness is what it is. And Turiya is what it is, whatever that is. It's indescribable. But it can be experienced. As Rumi, the poet, said, the drop merges into the ocean, and lo, the miracle is that the ocean also merges in the drop. This is inconceivable, obviously. It is beyond knowledge, certainly. But it is to be perceived. It is to be known. It is to be experienced. It is to be pursued with all intensity and vigor. Because this is self-realization. This is the ultimate aim of human life. This is the purpose of all existence, to realize itself, to realize the self, to realize Brahman. Aum Tatsa, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya.